Due to technical difficulties, only the sermon portion of the October 24th worship service will be viewable. Thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you along your life's journey. Will you stand with me as you're able for our scripture lesson this morning? It comes to us from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10 and verses 12 through 22. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father." So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So we continue our fall sermon series, the top 10 letters of Paul, and we come to the book of Ephesians. When I was a youngster, I asked a question of my mother, which I've learned many youngsters have asked their families once they start learning the economics of, of our culture. I came home one day and I asked my mother, are we rich? Are we rich? And my mom gave an answer, which I've come to learn is also an answer many parents have given. Maybe you recall as well. She said, yes. Yes, we are rich. We don't have much money, but we are rich. My mother was teaching me that all-important lesson that the richness of life cannot be measured by dollars and cents. There's a depth to the richness of life that can only be experienced within. The truth is that's really Paul's message to the Ephesians. How to get rich. <laughs> How is it? What does true richness look like? How do we experience the wealth of joy and meaning and purpose that God has for us? And Paul talks about those immeasurable riches that come to us in Christ Jesus. So are we rich? Yes, we are. Here's how we can experience that richness and that wealth of joy that God desires for us. I've included an outline there in your bulletin and Outline will also appear on the screen for those who are joining by live stream. First of all, place all of your stock in God's mercy. Place all of your stock in God's mercy. That has been the foundations for generations of people that have experienced the wealth and richness of life that God has for them. They realize that they have to surrender entirely to the mercy of God. The Apostle Paul said it here in Ephesians, by grace are ye saved the immeasurable riches of his kindness, his mercy towards us. It's that undeserved, unmerited mercy and love of God. If we go down to the river to pray and inquire in those older ways, we'll find that all of the generations before us found in the mercy of God the forgiveness and freedom that they needed to live the life that God has called them to live. You know, just this past Friday... 
was the 20th anniversary date of my father's death. And like many of you, I know when those dates roll around, you sort of recall memories that are significant to you. And I remember when I went into the ministry in 1980, I was making $425 a month. Well, I needed a car to make my way among those six churches. And so with my father's help, we went out and like any good circuit rider, we, we bought a horse <laughs> that is a Ford Pinto. Do you remember the Ford Pinto? Well, stripped down, kind of cheap, but affordable for me. I remember at the car lot, it was $5,000 for that Ford Pinto. Well, because of graduation gifts and gifts from relatives and others, I had about $1,000 saved up. So I was $4,000 short. And so my dad said to me, I'll tell you what, I'll loan you the $4,000, and then you pay me back $100 a month until it's paid off. That's what I did. I would get my check. I would write a check for $100, send it to my dad. I did that for an entire year. After a year had gone by, I remember my dad wrote me a letter. You still, you still wrote some letters in those days. I went down to the little country post office. I got the letter, and I, and I opened it up, and my dad had scrawled a note, and it simply said, you owe no more, paid in full. You owe no more, paid in full. Oh, wow, what a relief. What freedom, honestly. For just a moment there, I, I really did feel rich. This was going to be a, a great burden off of my heart and a, and a great burden off my $425 a month budget as well. But oh, what a feeling to know that my debt had been forgiven. In essence, friends, that's what it means to put all of our stock in God's mercy. The gap between where we are and where we need to be with God, we cannot bridge that gap ourselves, but God has taken care of us. He's taken care of that in Christ Jesus. The debt that we owe him for all that he's done, we could never repay, but we don't have to because he's taken care of that, his immeasurable riches, his grace, his mercy given in Christ Jesus. Friends, the true richness of life can only be found in a connected relationship with God. But we cannot connect ourselves. We can't bridge that opening. We throw ourselves at the feet of God's mercy and realize that it's been paid in full. The debt is covered. The gap has been bridged. And friends, that's the foundation. That's the beginning point of the walk of discipleship. And that's the beginning point of discovering the richness of life, the wealth of joy that God has for you. Secondly, open yourself to the bonds of peace. Open yourself to the bonds of peace. Notice there that it says in verse 14, speaking of Jesus, For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. And then Paul goes on to talk about the peace that Jesus Christ brings. Friends, that's what God desires for our life. Not only to live in peace with God but to have a bond with one another that enables us to live at peace with one another. This is God's desire for humanity. Notice he says he has created one new humanity in Christ Jesus. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we're called to represent that kind of peace to the world. The dividing wall of hostility has come down. Remind me of the story of James Messenger. Messenger tells the story of moving to Florida into a neighborhood, wife, two kids, he said he moved into the neighborhood, and there was a fence between he and his neighbor. And the fence uh, had kind of a hole in it. There were some missing boards, one of those taller privacy fence. So he wasn't sure, is it my fence? Is it the neighbor's fence? I'd like to repair it. And so he said he went over to introduce himself to his neighbor. A Hispanic gentleman answered the door. And he introduced himself. Said, I'm James Messenger. My family and I have just moved here. I, I just wanted to know whose fence that was because I noticed there are a couple panels missing, and I would like to repair it if it's mine. And the gentleman said, well, actually, that fence was erected by the person who lived there before you because he didn't like living next to people like us. But, he said, our kids like to play, so they're the ones that every now and then would just kick those, those boards open and they'd crawl through back and forth playing with one another because they were about the same age. Messenger said he went home and he thought about this for a moment and he thought to himself, you know what, I'm not going to repair that fence. I'm going to take it down completely. And so that's what he did. 
He tore down that privacy fence. And he said, you know, two backyards together can really create a wonderful space for some good football games when kids are playing. They create a wonderful space for a, for a soccer field. Two backyards together, plenty of space for a baseball game or for a game of catch. So much better living without that fence, Messenger said. And friends, that's true in our lives today. We know what it feels like. I know deep inside we do. We know what it feels like to live with a sense of peace towards others. And we know what it feels like inside the agitation that happens when there's animosity in the air. When there's animosity in the air, we're, we're all agitated and anxious. But when there's peace, there's a calm and there's a comfort. Friends, if you want to experience the richness of life that God has for you, the wealth of joy that God desires for your life, then open yourself to the bonds of peace with God, with one another, and let us represent those bonds of peace in our world today. Third, the Apostle Paul highlights, realize that mutuals are the key to meaning and purpose. Now, Daryl and others who have been in the, the financial world, they would perhaps argue about mutual funds, but they can't argue about this kind of mutual because the mutuality that Paul talks about is a mutual faith in Jesus Christ, a mutual service, a mutual devotion to him. Realize that that kind of mutuality together is the key to finding meaning and purpose. Notice in verse 21, Paul said, In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together. That is, you're built mutually into a dwelling place for God. Have you ever thought about that? You are a dwelling place for God in our world. We as the church of Jesus Christ, we are to be a dwelling place for God. When you go to work, when you go to school, when you go into your various social arenas, you are a dwelling place for God. How are we doing? Those mutual moments, my friends, that mutual service and dedication to God truly is the key, one of the keys, to richness, to the wealth of joy that God has for us. You know, in all my days, I, uh, growing up with getting a couple TV channels on rabbit ears, I never thought that there would be a whole network devoted to food. <laughs> a, a whole network devoted to food. But there it is, the Food Network. I love food, I don't necessarily like that channel, but because my wife likes the channel, and certainly if my daughter's visiting, they outnumber me two to one, we're going to be watching some shows on the Food Network. And, and then the more I watch it, I, there are some of those programs that I like. You know, Beat Bobby Flay, I like that show on the Food Network, Beat Bobby Flay. I like Barefoot Contessa, I like Pioneer Woman. I like Trisha Yearwood's Southern Kitchen. Uh, I like watching it because I'm always hoping that her husband, Garth Brooks, might show up because he's one of my, my favorite country singers. And then there's always the diners, drive-ins, and dives. You can tell that I've spent more than my share of time watching the Food Network. I could actually list for you many other programs there. But regardless of the program, one thing's consistent, and I've heard this in various ways uh, from these hosts. That is the most, the most enjoyable part is after the food's been prepared and everything's there, is that mutual moment when they sit down at table and enjoy the nourishment that's in front of them. That mutual moment is the most joyful part of any of those programs. And so it is in our lives, friends. One of the most meaningful, purposeful things that we engage in should be this mutual moment of worship should be the mutual moment that we go forth to serve, should be the mutual faith that we share in Jesus Christ, the mutual ministry, the mutual efforts on behalf of Christ, the mutual endeavors, the mutual focus that we have, our mutual desire to glorify God. That sense of mutuality can bring that depth of richness to our lives and help us to experience again the wealth of joy that God has for us. Realize that that kind of mutuality, it's so key to having meaning and purpose. And then finally, risk investing in the futures that God has already planned. Now, I know futures in the financial market, that's a very risky investment. 
But the future here is a future that is in God's hands. Therefore, we can take the risk of faith to lean into the future that God has in mind for each and every one of us. What a wonderful thought. God already has our future. Did you hear that in verse 10? The Apostle Paul says, For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. I have to tell you, my friends, as a pastor during these times, that's been one of my favorite verses in the letters of Paul. To think that God is already running ahead of me, running ahead of us, preparing the way. Because coming out of this pandemic, wondering what's ahead, how to minister, how do we help reestablish people's patterns of, of attendance. You know, if I, if I sit on the couch for a year and a half, it's going to be tough for me to get back up and start an exercise program. And so it is when it comes to church. How do we help reconnect? And you know, if I had to come up with all of those answers myself... I would be overcome with anxiety. But this verse reminds me I don't have to come up with it. God has already prepared. Another translation says prepared in advance the way for us to walk. Friends, that's true for you as an individual. And that's true for us as a community of faith. All we must needs do is pray and discern that way and have the courage to walk the path that God has already blazed. You know, when I lived in Morgantown, I uh, ran more regularly, mostly walk now, but then I ran regularly. And I was a part of a running group. Uh, about once a week, we would have what's called a hash run. Now, if you've not been familiar with running groups, you probably have no idea, but a large group of us would gather, give a couple pieces of sidewalk chalk to the person who would serve as the hare or the rabbit. He'd get a half hour head start, and then he would go through the streets and he would make hash marks. He would make hash marks with the chalk. And we would have to follow those hash marks. Now, he may take us down a false trail. And then we'd look for the arrow that points the real trail. And together, the group would begin to discern by following those hash marks, by following those trailblazes, if you would, we would then navigate the maze of streets and hills and come out finally five to seven miles later uh, as a group at our destination. That's what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. He is already gone in advance for you. Know that God has your future in his hands. He's running ahead of you right now, preparing the way for you to walk and for us to walk together. We can risk everything because we're trusting in the one who holds the future for us. He has already planned that for you and for me. Friends, that should set us free to experience and encounter the richness that God has for us and the wealth of joy that he desires for each and every one of us. Are we rich? Yes, we are. We are rich because of the immeasurable riches of God's grace and mercy toward us. We are rich because he desires for us to live in peace with him and with one another. We are rich because he invites us to engage in a mutual faith and service to Christ. And we are rich because we have a God who loves us and already, already is preparing the way in the future for us to walk. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise that in your son Jesus Christ, we can experience the depth and richness of genuine, authentic life. In and through your Son, Jesus Christ, we can encounter a wealth of joy and meaning and purpose. Forgive us for those times in which we have preferred other ways or given in to the expectations of this world or their definitions of what richness involves. And turn us again to Jesus Christ that we might experience your grace and mercy and your peace and a true sense of mutual faith together. And above all today, O oh Lord, help us to place ourselves entirely in your hands, knowing that we might not know the future, but we know that you hold the future. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We invite you to reflect upon these things for your own faith walk. Maybe there's another step of commitment or dedication that you need to make. Maybe there's someone that you know that is especially anxious about the future and could use a gracious word 
of reassurance from you today. The hymn that we'll share says it all. The chorus, we were reminded of it earlier. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Let us share together.